Hey guys, welcome back to True Crime with Shannon, where I cover missing persons, unsolved cases, crime news, and more. Well, this one is a horrific, horrific case, horrific crime that just hit this week out of Oklahoma. Uh, I've just started to learn about it in the last couple of days so I wanted to um, cover it here a bit on the channel and this is the local a local affiliate WKYT Oklahoma S offender fatally shot six then killed himself and again this would be a trigger warning for sure this is a uh, horrific and there's still a lot more that has not not come out yet in oklahoma sex offender who was released from prison early shot his wife her three children and their two friends in the head and then offed himself authorities confirmed on wednesday as concerns grew about why he was free in the first place yeah that's definitely one of the biggest questions okmahogi and I'm probably saying that name wrong. Police Chief Joe Prentice said that the victims had sustained between one and three wounds to the head when they were found Monday on a rural Oklahoma property. Jesse McFadden, a 39-year-old convicted SEX offender, then shot himself, Prentice said in the first major update on the case. Well, at least he offed himself. That's about the only good thing I can say about it. The victim's bodies were found near a creek in a heavily wooded area. The evidence is that Jesse McFadden murdered six people and then killed himself. Beyond that, I don't know what his thought process was, Prentice said. I'm not going to express a theory because I follow the evidence and I don't have any evidence about what the motive was. Smart, smart guy. He's, he's not going to throw out crap theories or what have you, they're going to investigate this and make sure they get it right. So I applaud him on that. Family members have questioned how an artist accused of soliciting nude images from another teen while behind bars was ever allowed to go free. Yes, bingo. What is going on, guys? There's, It's like another failure by our system, you know? The shooting happened as a series of ominous text messages sent by McFadden to his young accuser hours before his trial was set to begin on felony charges of soliciting and possessing images of a child SEX abuse suggested that he blamed the woman for ending his quote great life unquote and that he was determined not to return to prison. Well, that always seems to be a good motive to uh, commit another horrific crime that I'm not going back to prison. According to screen grabs of the text messages forwarded to KOKI in Tulsa by the now 23-year-old woman McFadden allegedly groomed from prison, he said he was having success at a marketing job and, quote, making great money, unquote. Now it's all gone, he texted. I told you I wouldn't go back. This is all on you for continuing this, he finished. Sure, throw a bunch of crap on someone you groomed and did horrible things with via text message. Yeah, he's a great guy. A solicitation conviction can meet a 10-year sentence. The pornography charge could mean 20 years behind bars yeah he was not gonna go back for gosh i guess he wasn't even gonna go back for another day so he's like screw it and basically he just went all out prentice declined though to speculate on whether that is what led to the shooting yeah i i, I understand what he's what he's trying to do but come on they know this is exactly what led to the shooting he had a court date he wasn't gonna do it and he's like nope so I'm going to go out in a blaze of glory. 
Everyone wants to understand why, he said. Normal people can't understand why. People who perpetrate crimes like this are evil, and normal folks like us can't understand why they do it. That is, that's completely true. As long as I've been following true crime and, you know, the time I've just been doing this channel, seeing all these horrible stories that are real, true things that have happened, it's it's hard to comprehend what is going on with these people, but some people are just just evil. Mokoscobie County District Attorney Larry Edwards said the young woman shared the text messages with him as well. They are tragic. Let's just say that. He is more or less blames her for what he did, and that's the part I really have the problem with because she didn't do anything wrong. Edwards told Tulsa Tulsa based KOTV. Of course she didn't do anything wrong. He doesn't want to take blame. He doesn't want to go back to jail for his his actions. And so, yep. Authorities began a search after McFadden failed to appear at his long-delayed jury trial on Monday in Muscogee County. His body was later discovered along with his wife, her son, and daughters, and two other teens who were visiting the family over the weekend. Yeah, it kind of... There was, they were reported missing, those two teens, and this all collided on Monday. Now, family members of the victims are asking why McFadden, who was sentenced to 20 years in 2003 for first-degree R in the SA assault of a 17-year-old, was freed three years early, in part for good behavior, despite facing new charges that he used a contraband cell phone in 2016 to trade nude photos with the woman, who was then 16. He was released in 2020 after 16 years and nine months, even though the charges could send him back to prison for many years if convicted. Yeah, whose grand idea was it to let him out? I mean, I, I, I guarantee you that's, it, it's, if it hasn't already been looked into, it's on the list of things that investigators are going to be like, what dummy, and I'm putting that mildly, what idiot let this guy out and they rushed him out of prison how asked Jeanette Mayo she said she was told that her daughter Holly Guest 35 and her grandchildren Riley Elizabeth Allen 17 Michael James Mayo 15 and Tiffany Dorr Guest 13 were all shot to death Oklahoma failed to protect families and because of that my children my daughter and my grandchildren are all gone Mayo said, I've lost my daughter and my grandchildren and I'm never going to see them, never going to get to hold them, and it's killing me. Justin Weber, who said he allowed his 14-year-old Ivy Webster to join a sleepover at the McFadden home, not knowing anything about the man's past, raised similar concerns about McFadden's release. To get to save some other children, to make a change that is what I want to do, Webster told the Associated Press during a tearful interview on Tuesday in Henrietta, expressing a determination to tell Ivy's story and our story and get our government officials and everybody to start speaking up loud and keeping those pedos in jail. There needs to be repercussions and somebody needs to be held accountable. They let a monster out. They did this, Webster said. I agree with him, but... Again, if you let your child go over someone's house, don't you think you ought to know where they're going? I, I Sadly, in this day and age, it's even worse than it was when I was a kid. I could tell you for a fact that my mother knew exactly where I was if I was over a friend's house or my brother. She knew where we were. And if she had any question about our safety, we would not be there. So, uh, yeah, I'm not trying to, again, I'm not trying to attack these uh, families who lost loved ones. But, you know, unfortunately, you got you to gotta spend some time, you know, just, what, five, ten minutes. Search for, you know, these families on Google if, if you haven't met them. Even if you've met them, maybe you need to do a background search. Yeah, it, it really sucks because, you know, it takes you a little bit of time. But, you know, you're going to save a, a life 
And, you know, and to me, that's, that's worth the extra few minutes. A spokeswoman for the Oklahoma Department of Corrections did not immediately respond to a request for comment on Wednesday on why McFadden was released despite facing new felony charges. Yeah, they're going to have to get their press release and their statement kind of in order with their lawyers on this one. And, you know, it's going to be very, very, very well thought out. You know that for sure. Prosecutors objected to any early release from prison, noting that he tied a 17-year-old's hands and feet to bedposts, cut her shirt off, and arred her at knife point. What a great guy, huh? At one point, he threatened to use the knife on her if she did not shut up the records show. Yeah, this is the kind of guy who should be castrated and locked up for good. The circumstances have alarmed Republican State Representative Justin Huffrey, who chairs his chamber's criminal judiciary committee. He told the AP in a text that he's working with another lawmaker on legislation that would, quote, stop tragedies of this nature from occurring again, unquote. Yeah, it's got to start somewhere and our government, that's where it needs to start. He said the effort will also involve trying to determine how a person could commit SEX crimes in prison and be released on good behavior and how McFadden was able to be in contact with minors while on SEX offender supervision. That's a good question. How how did he have a phone? How was he able to do this stuff? And, 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 you know, I'm I'm not, you know, a dummy. I realize criminals can get they can get illegal cell phones in prison. There's all kinds of ways to do stuff. I mean, if there's a will, there's a way. But how is he doing this stuff? He got caught and he was, they let him out early and he's supposed to be in court this past Monday on these other charges. So why was he free? There's, he should never have been released. That's the bottom line. Court records show McFadden was charged with the new crimes in 2017 after the young woman's relative alerted authorities. Set free in October 2020, he was arrested the next month and then released on a $25,000 bond pending the trial, which was repeatedly delayed in part due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Well, gee, that's that's not surprising, but he, he's, he's been released on a bond and you know, and, and they're not keeping an eye on him. And, you know, I know they're going to say, oh, it has to do with the pandemic. It has to do with the pandemic. Come on. It, I'm over that excuse. The guy is a horrible as a offender. It, if you're not going to keep an eye on him, you got to lock him back up. That's the bottom line. McFadden married Holly Guess in May of 2022. What she knew of his record isn't clear. McFadden married Holly Guess in May of 2022 which was pretty much about a year ago, when what she knew of his record isn't clear. Mayo said the family didn't learn about her son-in-law's criminal history until a few months ago. Again, maybe you should have done a little background check on him, you know? Not so much for Holly, but maybe for the, for the kids, you know? But just a suggestion. He lied to my daughter and he convinced her it was all just a huge mistake said Mayo of Westville. He was very standoffish, generally very quiet, but he kept my daughter and the kids basically under lock and key. He had to know where they were at all times, which sent red flags up. Well, are we not listening to the red flags? Apparently not, because this is all very sus. Why didn't you call the authorities? You really should have called the cops and uh, looked into this a lot more, Grandma. According to the Oklahoma Key, and I know I'm saying that incorrectly, I apologize, Oklahoma friends, County Sheriff Eddie Rice, the seven bodies were found on the property where McFadden lived near Henrietta, a town of about 6,000, about 90 miles east of Oklahoma City. The dead bodies included the two teens who had been reported missing and in danger. Webster, 14, and Brittany Brewer, 16. Brittany Brewer's father confirmed that his daughter was among the dead. At a vigil Monday night, 
Nathan Buer said it's just a parent's worst nightmare and I'm living it. The grim discovery could push the number of people slain in mass killings past 100 for the year, according to a database maintained by the AP and USA Today in partnership with Northeastern University. Yeah, there's there's far too many deaths it completely, but in 2023, I mean, I just saw another shooting in Atlanta today. What is going on in this world, guys? Really, what is going on? So again, I'm not trying to blame the families here of these of these lost loved ones. But grandma of these grandkids and of Holly, the mother, she learned some things and she even said there was some, you know, red flags popping up. And then you had these two teens, 14 and 16, their families were letting them go over there. And, uh... Unfortunately, they didn't look into who their children were hanging out with. And I hate to say it, but you just got to do that nowadays. I mean, you even had to do it in the 80s and 90s. I mean, this is 2023. Gosh knows what what house your kids are going to. It, it's it's sad and it's, it's you know, horrible that you got to do that. But it seems to be the way things are now. You got to do a simple Google check or... Uh, even maybe pay for a little background check just to ensure the safety of your loved ones. All right, let's check out this bit of an update from News Nation on the case. Here with me this morning is Nathan Brewer. He is Brittany Brewer's dad. Nathan, there really are no adequate words to express my sympathy and my condolences to you. Uh, my heart breaks as a parent, as a person, uh, for what you are going through. Thank you uh, for giving us a moment to, to remember and honor your daughter this morning. Thank you. In your grief, do you have any more clarity about what happened and why? Uh, not exactly at this point. We have spoken with Ivy's parents here at News Nation, and they said to us that they're not getting a lot of information from police and investigators. Is that true for you and your family, Nathan? Exactly. We not really, not really much. Uh, only thing now that they've been saying is, uh, you know, how she died. And what are they telling you? That she died from a gunshot wound to the head. That's hard to process. Yes, it is. What else are they doing right now on that property? As far as I know, they're still doing their final searches and doing their or investigation, sorry. So tell me about that sleepover and the teens getting together on Friday. What did you know about their plans? Uh, they were supposed to go to Tulsa, to the mall, and then uh, while I was at work, uh, Brittany came back and uh, told her stepmom that they were going to go swimming. And she got her swimsuit and a towel and left again. And that was the last time she saw Brittany. And the last time I saw Brittany was on Saturday. And tell me about that interaction, what the two of you talked about. Uh, I had just, we had just gone to... Uh, do a fundraiser for her youth camp that she was going to, uh, supposed to be going to in, uh, this summer. And uh, we did, just got done doing that. And when I came back to the house and dropped her off and uh, Jesse and Tiffany and Ivy were here to pick her up. So did you know Jesse McFadden at all? What was your interaction with him? I had, uh, Brittany had spent, weekends with them for about two years and I had met Jesse twice and nothing had come alarming to me that he would even be you know a registered sex offender or anything and I was I learned all that news when I was downloading my video surveillance at my house of Brittany leaving and getting into his vehicle and his license plate number. So you had no knowledge of his criminal past or the fact that he was due in court on child porn charges even as recently no, as this not, week? Not at all. And that's why I have got all the information to my local 
uh, legislation, and I'm going to push for the House for at least for uh, House and Senate to try to pass a bill. And at least Oklahoma, I want it to go nationwide, but to be either a an alert system like a silver alert, amber alert system, when people get out that is registered sex offenders, you get a mass text of their name and what state they are registering in. Well, and there are measures in place now, as you know, Nathan, they failed you and your family in this situation. You should have known and you didn't. I really feel for this father and like I said, the families, but there there are things in place for the SA offenders. There's a there's a registry that he it, that he has to be on and he knew him for he basically knew this guy for two years. I don't know. And I know it's some folks are probably gonna say, Well, you know, you shouldn't beat on these families for not checking into where their children are hanging out, but, and, and I'm not trying to beat them down. I'm really, really not. I, those that have followed my channel, they, you all know that I'm, I'm very, very pro victim. I'm always in it for the victims, but I, I do think there, there, you know, there needs to be some checks, you know, as far as the families are concerned, but more so I, I I'm, you know, concerned that the grandmother, um, of the grandchildren and the mother of Holly had these red flags she saw and the, she, she, she was concerned and, and didn't do anything about it. It's, it's very troubling. It truly is. And like I said, we're just starting to learn some information here today and, you know, two days later. And I don't know, it, this is a horrific, obviously horrific, horrific crime. And, there's so much that's got to be looked into and it all started because they let this SA offender out of jail. It never should have happened, period. And the rest of this, it would have never continued to, you know, to evolve. But I will keep you guys updated. I'm going to do some more uh, research on it. But this is uh, definitely a tough one truly is and again I really do uh, feel for the families and my condolences go out to them and uh, it's uh, something that nobody should have to uh, experience in their life you know a death of a family member due to uh, being uh, murdered all right guys that's all I've got for this one so far let me know what you think of this case and if uh, if it's local for you let me know if you uh, want to have any comments about it, obviously put it in the comments. Uh, and with that said, I hope you have a great rest of the day. And most of all, stay safe.